this is probably the first time I've actually worked on a project with my brother. You know, in terms of like the project dropping on November 27th, 2023. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that. Wow. All right, cool. Three year anniversary. Maybe this is a story about people rising to the top. This is a story about individual personalities uh, reaching the peak of the mountain. Danny's my brother. Just someone that I've grown up with, always super curious about technology and exploring all the beautiful things the world gives us to nerd out about. I mean, I'm, I'm an artist. Does that count as work? Or <laughs> Previously, though, I was working as a instructor at the University of Houston, teaching uh, creative code, and now I'm just making generative art all the time. I'm behind the laptop 24-7, just coding away. I'm an artist, I'm a collector, I'm an entrepreneur and a founder, and a dad and a husband. So Eric's my brother. He is a fun-loving, super laid-back, easy-to-talk-to guy, but he's also Snowfro. The squiggle guy that has done all these really awesome things that, you know, have enabled artists and blockchain sort of art to proliferate. This is probably the first time I've actually worked on a project with my brother. When you bring experts in something together, you get really awesome results. So it's been really special to have that here with SquiggleDAO and Eric and myself. Just working together and just supporting each other, I think is the most important thing. You know, in terms of like the project dropping on November 27th, 2023. <laughs> oh really? I didn't know that. Wow, all right, cool. The anniversary of the Artblocks launch and the day that Squiggle, Genesis, and Construction Token launched. Three year anniversary. That's awesome. That sort of date cemented this new life that we're all living. All those years of hard work kind of went into like something that was <laughs> worth all the time and, and frustration and, uh, and conversation. So SquiggleDAO is a group of collectors and enthusiasts that wanted to celebrate generative art, but also celebrate the Chromie Squiggle. Promote the Squiggle, educate people about generative art and about how the Squiggle plays a key role in that. Partnerships with other artists or brands or events. Which to me was you know, incredibly flattering and humbling and just kind of blew me away. From art comes all these wonderful things and blockchain makes these kinds of things possible. Maybe the thing that I find most exciting is that while they keep me in the loop on everything they're doing, which is really special for me to kind of see what's going on, I'm actually just another member of the Squiggle DAO, just like everybody else. I'm a member of the Squiggle DAO and couldn't be prouder. So Peanut Butter is a project, is a code name that kind of represents, I don't know, this persona that I, I think that I, I'd like to be my whole life and that I've, I'd like to communicate. It's almost um, like a portrait. And the work has taken on this new style for me, which is sketchiness. When it comes to like his work, it's so raw, so clean. There's so much emotion in the things that he does. I'm using block printing, looking up close at what causes all those little bubbles or little stray points of ink on a print and trying to reproduce that, the generative work itself through code that almost it seems like it's missing in a lot of the generative artwork that we see because it's really hard to reproduce that kind of stuff. The collaboration has probably been the last 38 years of our lives that we've spent together. Yeah, we've, we fought as kids. You know, just like any siblings do. But also did a lot of fun stuff together. When I was like in sixth grade or something, he found a pack of cigarettes in the drawer and I was like, you need to take every one of these cigarettes and break them up and throw them away in front of me. You know, D Danny was always way cooler than I was. Like, 
I still think he's way cooler than I am. He's the oldest, so he, I had it easy. He did all the hard stuff and, and I just, I learned so much from him just by watching what he did. And he's someone I've always looked up to and he's always been more, more daring than I was and more creative. And I use traditional techniques all the time to just get my like creative juices flowing. Early on through the project, I had this quick vision. You know, Michael Jackson in the 1980s, like everybody holding hands like, we are the world. <laughs> that kind of like feeling that that created, super positive, people joining together, cultures coming together. I felt at first like that's what squiggle is. That's what the, you know, like squiggle should inspire. A squiggle to me is, um, So oh, yeah, it's it's mind blowing. It's kind of hard to explain, uh, and I'm just really proud of it. Man, <laughs> Chromy Squiggle is a colorful curved line that can exist in a seemingly unlimited possible combinations of color, movement, and variation of styles. The simplest form of a generative art project that you can make. The Chromie Squiggle was originally a project created to be purely a proof of concept for art blocks. But at the same time, encompasses everything that generative art is, everything that randomness brings, the excitement of rarity and traits, the community building that, that, that Squiggles caused. I love it. I, I've always loved it. I thought it represented a lot of my past and my history and my technique. After high school, there was, it wasn't much uh, that I dedicated myself to from an artistic perspective. And it wasn't until I met my wife, I, I kind of credit her with a more creative opening for me. She's an architect, she's a super creative person. There's something about an artwork that is placed in the most perfect place that can enhance the message of the artwork. The 100 Untitled Spaces project is very much an inspiration based on architecture. The gradient that is in that piece, that's the center of that piece, that's a gradient I created as a test net piece for art blocks alongside the Chromie Squiggle back in 2019 and 2020. It was so important that that algorithm was placed in a what I consider to be a perfect setting. What I've learned is that inspiration is just a very brief moment and then the entire rest of the art process is like busy work, you know, like trying to make these things actually come to life. So for example, Bosque the Chapel Tepec, I had this very brief moment where I almost like I heard my mother's voice say Bosque the Chapel Tepec. I got this vision of this dark forest with trees and, and I was like, you know, Eureka. <laughs> it's the unknown that keeps me going. You know, I always saw my grandfather's artistry as influencing my brother very heavily in terms of being an artist. I'm sure it influenced both of us because we had paintings by my grandmother and my grandfather on our walls growing up. She was actually an assistant to Diego Rivera and Saqueros. But my grandfather, so his name is Isaac, in his later age, he traveled to Paris, learned to paint on the streets there. And then he brought back those techniques that he learned to Mexico City and then started a career as a painter. There's some of his works are still out there in the world and occasionally I've seen some on the internet and I'm like, I need to collect all those works and put them in my collection. So when I was like a uh, freshman in college, something like that, I was playing with, with that technique. I painted a painting for a friend. You know, I didn't take a picture of it because I didn't have iPhones back then. And I gave it to him as a gift and I still think that that was like my best painting ever. I messed around with it. I did that once and then I never did it again. <laughs> well, you just, there's a lot there. There's a lot of different layers there. The first time a Chromie Squiggle was tattooed on someone's leg, I felt a tremendous amount of joy and, a, and also a tremendous amount of panic. What is, you know, so important is this desire for me personally to have a more physical presence of my art. And that can be digital, that can be Samsung frame screens, that can be infinite object screens, but it's this desire that it's not just a bunch of things on my phone. Fundamentally, what I think matters to me is that the code that I produce is able to be vectorized because when it comes time to print these works, I want them to be able to scale up without having any kind of pixelization. Collectors have my work in their house, on their walls. 
Like what else could I ask for? I did not imagine myself being a full-time generative artist. Generative art is a highly, highly controversial question. Uh, I mean, it's not that highly controversial, but I've, I've been told by a few people that they have different opinions. I like the term variations on a theme. I look at generative art as an expansion of algorithmic art, art that's created using computer code. Luckily for the invention of blockchain, those kinds of outputs can be tokenized and they can be traded and sold and collected and appreciated in ways that we couldn't before. Artblocks is a platform that exists to facilitate artists that create visual and audio outputs with code to store that code on the Ethereum blockchain in a way that enables them to distribute their art where the collector at the point of purchase is executing and creating the piece of art based on the code that's stored on chain. It's like a gumball machine, right? <laughs> when you put in a quarter, you turn the knob and you don't know what color you're gonna get. But just as importantly, it could generate outputs that would scale to any device that they were shown on. You know, Artbox, as you see it today, is a platform that's here to elevate the medium of generative art and to hopefully get to work with the best artists to release the best artworks that this medium can facilitate. Daniel was instrumental in extracting this idea into something that was actionable. Not only did he create the first algorithm that I was able to use to demonstrate the technology before the Chromie Squiggle existed, but he would sit with me and listen and give ideas back. I'd say, you know, like, hey, that's pretty cool. Like, that wouldn't work, or uh, that sounds crazy, or that sounds awesome. And yeah, uh, without his support, I don't think our box would be here today. Yeah, I think that's just Eric being nice. Eric's an idea guy, right? He comes up with really awesome ideas that are usually far off in the future. From an achievement perspective, I think one of my proudest things is how many artists have reached out and said that Artblocks has changed their lives, how many collectors have reached out and said Artblocks has changed their lives. Art can be something new. Art has evolved in a new way. I mean, Duchamp's Fountain did that. Brillo boxes do that. And I think Squiggle does that. They've completely blown me away and they become like a mark or like an icon of a lot of things, hopefully representing who I am as a person and a lot of the people that became collectors in this space. There's art historians that are talking about this stuff, right? There's people that are writing books about it. There's lives that are being changed by it. Artists are being able to fulfill their dreams. Collectors are able to acquire uh, unique artworks. We have a strong vision in place of what we want to do and we're going to stick to it no matter what. It's just a really crazy awesome space. What's happened over the last couple of years is, is, is crazy but like really special for me.